Hello, my friends. Thanks for coming by. I'm happy you're here. It's your buddy Alex once again. And if you're anything like me and you uh, you were a fresh budding Bitwig artist, you went in and you started looking for the sidechain compressor. So you loaded up a compressor. It wasn't there. You loaded up the dynamics and found it. But now you're confronted with all these knobs and you want to make sense of them because if you're at all like me, you're frustrated when you don't understand things and you just need to know what it is. Also, I think for a lot of young and budding producers and songwriters, the compressor is kind of a pitfall for you guys, for a lot of you guys, not all of you, um, and just making sense of what all this stuff means. Like, if you don't, you see all these words like ratio and knee and threshold and peak and RMS and things like that and makeup gain and... Uh, and then you look it up in Google and you get all these crazy textbook definitions like ratio. Oh, for every 4 dB over the threshold, it'll allow 1 dB, blah, 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 blah. And then you got to look up threshold and then you got to look up this and that. And before you know it, you're kind of stumbling all over your feet. Well, I'm glad you came here if that's the case, because I'm going to not give you those definitions. I'm going to show you what these do and what effect they might have on your signal. I'm going to show you why you might choose the compressor over the, dyna the dynamics and vice versa and, uh, and some considerations when using them. And I'm going to try and do it all without getting too crazy into the technicality of this stuff. Okay, alrighty, grab a snack, grab a drink, have a seat, and let's dive right in. Okay, so up here you can see all I've done is I've taken a track and added a snare. I'm going to rename it Snare, okay? And that's it. It's just a track with a bunch of samples, uh, four bars long, of a snare drum. Let's have a listen. That's it, over and over again. Very predictable, very easy to see. Okay, now I'm going to start with the dynamics. Now, if you don't know what a compressor is, really, I don't like the definition I'm going to give you, but in the easiest sense, it's essentially uh, a way of controlling the volume on a track. Okay, I hope I don't get a lot of flack for saying that from some of the, the, the older guys that, that really know the technical stuff here. And the, I don't want to get technical with you and I don't want to argue. Uh, really, when you're starting to work with compressors, just know that it's in essentially a way of controlling the volume. If there's a if this track is wildly unpredictable and it goes from loud to quiet and uh, and you want to control some of that because it's hard to place it in your mix when it's like that, right? You're not going to automate the volume. You're not going to make that much automation. You might, but an automatic way of controlling that is by saying, "Hey, I want it so that when the volume is the loudest in my track, it's pulled down a little bit, and when the volume is the quietest in my track, it's brought up a little bit. So it kind of just normalizes your volume, and that, in a nutshell, is what the, the compressor is basically going to do. Now, a compressor is a type of dynamic plugin, and that's why we have this plugin called Dynamics. It's really, it's just an umbrella term for compressors, limiters, expanders, and gates, okay? There's a few more things that fall into that category, but they call this one Dynamics because you can really, you can mold this one to be any of those things, okay? All right, now, stay with me here. Let's divide this thing up as we always do. On the left, you see one screen. And in this screen, it's basically a graphical representation, a way for you to view uh, what you're doing to your sound, a way for you to see how you're going to affect your sound, okay? In the right screen, it's another uh, kind of way of, of showing you what effect you have placed on your sound after the fact. What have you done that has shaped your sound? And you'll see what I mean. This is stock. This has not been changed. Everything is straight. Everything is just the way it loads up. Let's have a listen. Okay, let me turn down the master a little. Okay, starting on the first view on the left here, what do you notice? Well, every time the snare drum hits, there's this little white dot that shoots up this orange line. And so you can think of this as a somewhat of a graph. So on the y-axis, you have uh, the volume, let's say, okay, from no volume at all to the highest volume it gets. 
on the x-axis on the horizontal side here you you have the time from where it, when it goes from no volume to maximum volume and back down again that's why it makes sense every time the snare drum hits you see this little white dot travel up this orange line because when it's up here it's at its peak volume and by the time it gets back down here it's at its lowest volume okay and that's just a very simple explanation of that so now if i want to i can grab this line right here which is my high threshold and say well if this if right here is where the highest peak in my snare drum is hitting then at this point i want it to i don't know turn down in volume okay so i grab my th high threshold and i set it right around there and now i can take my ratio and i can angle it down so now what do you notice let's listen right so as soon as it passes this threshold line it's turning the volume down of that signal now if i want it to turn it up i can do that too and now what you've ex what you've basically done is take this from being a compressor when it's like that to an expander both are types of dynamic plugins but in this case if you want to compress it then that's simply what you do and now you're no now we've taken care of the ratio and threshold on the high side of things right so you're wondering what the knee does well look at this curve right there if i turn the knee down it's a sharp curve right it's very mechanical at that point it doesn't care about anything it just knows that as soon as it reaches this point it's going to turn down the volume by however much you've used on the ratio and if i bring up the knee it's a little bit smoother right and some consider it a little bit more musical i don't think that's true i think that it's just a different way of, of setting it because now you'll notice that the compression actually starts back here somewhere and starts turning down the signal and by the time it gets there it's at your desired result whereas if you turn down the knee it falls follows this line the normal volume of itself right up to here and then harshly turns down the the volume of this peak of the snare drum so now if you look at the right hand screen you can see exactly that so every time the snare drum hits the blue line is showing you the volume of the track the output volume of this track and every time the snare drum hits it's turning down that volume okay now how fast is it doing that well that shows that's why we have attack and release the attack is saying how fast do you want to turn down that volume exactly okay now it's a snare drum so if I turn the attack all the way down that means the absolute second instantly as soon as that sound comes up I want it turned down and I don't want to delay well what that does is kind of cuts off the front of your snare drum right so if I turn this up it's letting a little bit of that peak through a little bit of that snare drum uh, attack through and the release is saying how long is it going to take for my volume to return back to the normal volume of my track so if i turn it down you'll notice that the blue gets thinner right so it doesn't take quite as long for the volume to go back to normal or if i turn it up it takes forever it might never come back to, to, to its original volume okay so that's a big thing is to play with the attack and release on that okay so now we have the low threshold right here which is exactly the same thing but a mirror image of the high threshold so these three knobs or these two knobs uh, pertain to the high threshold and these two pertain to the low threshold so now we can take a look let me just uh fix this up a little bit okay so now we can see that right down here is the lowest volume that my snare drum gets to well i can say well when it reaches this point i want it to i don't know uh turn down in volume again so now what's happening as soon as it hits this point it's killing the volume it's turning it right off okay and as i move it up you can see the effect that it has right so maybe i want it to turn up the volume when it gets low okay and let's bring up the threshold a little bit see do you hear that little difference It's very subtle let me turn it up
Right, okay. And now if we look at the right hand screen, you can see what's happening here. So as soon as the snare drum hits, it turns down the volume and then increases the volume. Because of course, when the snare drum hits, it hits up here where we've turned down the volume and then the white dot travels down. And now we're increasing the volume from the original because the original is all the way down there and we've brought it up to there. Okay, and your peak and RMS values. Um, at first, I thought they were just a way of viewing, like the old view meters, you could kind of switch them between peak and RMS. But actually, this is a, how the Dynamics plugin is going to respond uh, to the signal that's coming into it. So if you're on peak value, it's measuring the sounds when they're at their loudest. Uh, and, and taking that into account, okay? And RMS is taking the average volume of that sound. So for example, if your peak is at, um, I don't know, something easy like, mm, like zero dB at, at, the, at its loudest and at its quietest, it's at minus 10 and, uh, and it's going z minus 10 to zero uh, perfectly consistently, then the RMS, I, I guess in that case, would be minus five or something like that. But basically, this is the average and this is the, the, the highest uh, value in volume that the compressor is going to measure. And so where that differs is, is this is basically a, a typical compression. It's, it's what we use mostly for when we're side chaining uh, kick drums to bass lines and stuff like that. And RMS is if you want to make the overall volume of your track louder. Okay. And it's a little bit smoother. It's a little more subtle. Uh, and this is the harsher kind of compression that we all are familiar with. All right, here you can see that on the left is the signal as it comes into the dynamics and then the signal as it comes out to out of the dynamics on the right. Okay, so you can see that on the left, it's actually a, a little bit higher of a volume than on the right. And that makes sense because we're actually reducing a lot of the volume here on the peak. So you can use the output to make up for that and so that they match signals, which is ideal. Let's get it to match. And now they're roughly close to each other. And now the blue thing that you notice here is showing a, a gain reduction or expansion. Right? And it's just showing you uh, what it's doing basically at that time. Okay. All right. That's a dynamics plugin. We are going to get into the side chain thing, but at first I want to show you the compressor. Okay. All right. Let's have a look at the compressor now. Okay. So I'm going to press play and what you're going to notice is much of the same thing. So on the dynamics, we had ratio knee and threshold. And here it's the same basic thing. So we have uh, threshold and ratio, no knee, and we have the same attack and release as we did there. Okay. Of course we have the gain, the input and output of signals. And, uh, and here we only had the output, but not much has changed other than the fact that you only get one threshold and there's no knee setting. So let's press play and have a look. Okay. So you'll notice that nothing is happening here. And why might that be? Well, first of all, I know nothing's happening because I'm looking at this blue line and it's not changing. Remember this blue line is depicting what is the output volume, what is happening to the output volume of this plugin. And then in behind it, of course, you can see the transients of my snare drum and coincidentally, they look the exact same as they do on the track. Well, this isn't really having any effect because my ratio is set to one to one which I'm not, again, I'm not going to get technical with it, but the ratio is all the way down. So what I'm doing right now is saying, don't do anything when the sound reaches this line. Okay. So here's your threshold. If I bring this threshold down a little bit and bring up the ratio, what do you notice is happening? Well, I'm, I'm telling it that at this line, which is also, again, this is your threshold. Notice how I, when I move this, the threshold knob, uh, changes and vice versa. Well, I'm saying right now is by bringing this up is when the snare drum volume exceeds this point right now, I want it to reduce the volume by however much I set my ratio. So if I turn my ratio all the way up, what do you notice? That's right. I'm saying as soon as you pass this volume level right here, I want you to bring down the output volume a lot automatically. 
and now you have your attack and release which i can say well how fast do i want you to do it well the attack is set to very low so which means i want you to do it hella fast look at 2.2 milliseconds which is super super fast right if i turn it up it takes a, takes a little longer for the attack to kick in right and with release again i'm saying how long do i want to wait for that signal to return back to its original volume okay and that's in a nutshell uh the, the compressor it's a simpler version of the dynamics uh and it just if you if you're looking for compression this is the one to go to because it's much simpler and then you won't have to fart around with all these kind of controls here so some genius man said well what if i can take some other signal for example a polysynth or a pad and what if i can use the snare drum uh, signal to trigger what happens to the volume of my pad instead of the volume of my snare drum so what you can do is you load up a dynamics on your pad and in this case i just have a regular old polysynth let me delete this i have a regular old polysynth nothing special happening here in an a minor right very beautiful and let's throw in a dynamics plugin Okay, all right, there's the dynamics plugin that we are starting to love. And now I'm going to set the device input to the snare, and I'm going to set it to pre. And I'm setting it to pre, that way it doesn't matter what I do with this channel volume, uh, it's going to behave the same way, making it more predictable to, to me. So I can even take the solo off and bring this all the way down, and you're not going to hear the snare drum, but this still is, okay? All right, so now... Let's press play and tell me what you notice. Right, so on the left here, you can see, again, we have the snare hitting. It's jumping up this orange line, as it always has before, right? Just like that. Except now, on the right-hand screen, we have the transient and the signals of the or the sorry the waveform of the polysynth and of course now this blue line is going to show you what's happening with the volume as it comes out of the polysynth okay so now i can set this up let's have a listen i can set this up and say well when i when the snare drum reaches past here i want to turn the volume down right i want a hard knee i want it to happen fast and it to take a little while okay so if we look just at this it's as as it jumps past this line right here it's reducing the volume okay and but it's not doing that to the snare the snare still sounds the same as it always did what it's doing is having that effect on my polysynth so when the snare drum hits it pulls down the volume of my polysynth and lets it come back up depending on how fast or how long I set the attack and release. And again, here you have your input volume and your output volume. And then the blue is telling you when and how fast it's reducing the gain at this point. So now you notice the output is a little bit quieter than my input. So I might bring that up a little, just a tiny bit, right? And that's how you get that pumping and breathing side chain sound. Okay, I hope that clears it up a little bit for you. Again, the only reason you might choose a Dynamics is if you're going to use a sidechain with a compressor or if you want to mess around with these controls and create an expander by doing something that's like this or if you want to use a gate, which is doing something like this, right? And, uh, and it's up to you. You can, you can kind of create a bunch of different Dynamics plugins by messing around with these. And you'll easily kind of get to know how to do that. Now, the reason I didn't want to get too technical with you is I just want to get you using this plugin first, okay? Just get using it, 
play around with it, uh, see what effects it has. And then when you go and look up those definitions, those super dry old school definitions of ratio and threshold, you'll be able to put two and two together and figure it out. But I'll say one thing, if you're going to play with these plugins, if you're going to play with any Dynamics plugins, but you don't exactly know how they work, I'm going to tell you, go on your master channel and put a peak limiter on it. Okay. It would be very easy for you to clip these uh, to clip your tracks and your master really hard by screwing around with some of these. If I'm turning everything up, then it would be very easy for me to, to clip, uh, to clip my master. And so to protect it, uh, just put some, put a peak limiter on there. Okay. And also watch the output meter. If it's always in the red, obviously that's no good for you. Okay. All right. Let me know if you have any more questions about this. I want to clear them up because you're going to, you're going to run into this time and time again. You, you might never make a track that doesn't use some kind of dynamic plugin. Okay. These days it's on everything in some different way or form. Okay. So it's, it's, it, it's beneficial to you to, to get a clear understanding. And if, if even right now, if it's not a hundred percent abundantly clear to you, don't worry, just go in there and play around with them and you'll learn what effect they have. And then you'll assign your own definition to these, uh, to these names and you'll get familiar with it and you'll be dynamicing like a pro. Okay. All right, guys, let me know what you think. Please subscribe to my video if you haven't already. If you have, thank you very much. Uh, and you can comment or you can email me and you can ask me absolutely anything. Like a question that came up in my mind the other day when I was driving is, how come there's never any swear words on license plates, right? Think about how big a country is. All the random combinations of of license plates, you would think that at some point it's going to generate an F-U-C-K, but it never does. So who's in charge or what computer program is in charge of making sure that that doesn't get randomly generated? Okay, maybe you won't ask a question like that. But if you have anything that you want to know about Bitwig, certainly let me know and I'll make a video tailor-made just for you to explain how it's done. Okay? All right, guys. We'll see you next time. Take care.